January 10. Esau marries Ishmael's daughter. Esau knew that his father Isaac had blessed Jacob and sent him to paid Aram to find a wife, and that he had warned Jacob, you must not marry a Canaanite woman. He also knew that Jacob had obeyed his parents and gone to paid Aram. It was now very clear to Esau that his father did not like the local Canaanite women. So Esau visited his uncle Ishmael's family and married one of Ishmael's daughters in addition to the wives he already had. His new wife's name was Mahalath. She was the sister of Nebaioth and the daughter of Ishmael, Abraham's son. Jacob's Dream at Bethel Meanwhile, Jacob left Beersheba and traveled toward Haran. At sundown, he arrived at a good place to set up camp and stopped there for the night. Jacob found a stone to rest his head against and lay down to sleep. As he slept, he dreamed of a stairway that reached from the earth up to heaven. And he saw the angels of God going up and down the stairway. At the top of the stairway stood the Lord. And he said, I am the Lord, the God of your grandfather Abraham, and the God of your father Isaac. The ground you are lying on belongs to you. I am giving it to you and your descendants. Your descendants will be as numerous as the dust of the earth. They will spread out in all directions, to the west and the east, to the north and the south, and all the families of the earth will be blessed through you and your descendants. What's more, I am with you, and I will protect you wherever you go. One day, I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have finished giving you everything I have promised you. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I wasn't even aware of it. But he was also afraid and said, What an awesome place this is. It is none other than the house of God, the very gateway to heaven. The next morning, Jacob got up very early. He took the stone he had rested his head against, and he set it upright as a memorial pillar. Then he poured olive oil over it. He named that place Bethel, which means House of God, although the name of the nearby village was Luz. Then Jacob made this vow, If God will indeed be with me and protect me on this journey, and if he will provide me with food and clothing, and if I return safely to my father's home, then the Lord will certainly be my God. And this memorial pillar I have set up will become a place for worshiping God, and I will present to God a tenth of everything he gives me. Jacob arrives at Padanarum. Then Jacob hurried on, finally arriving in the land of the east. He saw a well in the distance. Three flocks of sheep and goats lay in an open field beside it, waiting to be watered. But a heavy stone covered the mouth of the well. It was the custom there to wait for all the flocks to arrive before removing the stone and watering the animals. Afterward, the stone would be placed back over the mouth of the well. Jacob went over to the shepherds and asked, Where are you from, my friends? We are from Haran, they answered. Do you know a man there named Laban, the grandson of Nahor? he asked. Yes, we do, they replied. Is he doing well? Jacob asked. Yes, he's well, they answered. Look, here comes his daughter Rachel with the flock now. Jacob said, Look, it's still broad daylight, too early to round up the animals. Why don't you water the sheep and goats so they can get back out to pasture? We can't water the animals until all the flocks have arrived, they replied. Then the shepherds move the stone from the mouth of the well, and we water all the sheep and goats. Jacob was still talking with them when Rachel arrived with her father's flock, for she was a shepherd. And because Rachel was his cousin, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and because the sheep and goats belonged to his uncle Laban, Jacob went over to the well and moved the stone from its mouth and watered his uncle's flock. Then Jacob kissed Rachel, and he wept aloud. He explained to Rachel that he was her cousin on her father's side, the son of her aunt Rebekah. So Rachel quickly ran and told her father Laban. As soon as Laban heard that his nephew Jacob had arrived, he ran out to meet him. He embraced and kissed him and brought him home. When Jacob had told him his story, Laban exclaimed, You really are my own flesh and blood. Jacob marries Leah and Rachel. After Jacob had stayed with Laban for about a month, Laban said to him, You shouldn't work for me without pay just because we are relatives. Tell me how much your wages should be. 
Now Laban had two daughters. The older daughter was named Leah, and the younger one was Rachel. There was no sparkle in Leah's eyes, but Rachel had a beautiful figure and a lovely face. Since Jacob was in love with Rachel, he told her father, I'll work for you for seven years if you'll give me Rachel, your younger daughter, as my wife. Agreed, Laban replied. I'd rather give her to you than to anyone else. Stay and work with me. So Jacob worked seven years to pay for Rachel. But his love for her was so strong that it seemed to him but a few days. Finally, the time came for him to marry her. I have fulfilled my agreement, Jacob said to Laban. Now give me my wife so I can marry her. So Laban invited everyone in the neighborhood and prepared a wedding feast. But that night, when it was dark, Laban took Leah to Jacob, and he slept with her. Laban had given Leah a servant, Zilpah, to be her maid. But when Jacob woke up in the morning, it was Leah. What have you done to me? Jacob raged at Laban. I worked seven years for Rachel. Why have you tricked me? It's not our custom here to marry off a younger daughter ahead of the firstborn. Laban replied, but wait until the bridal week is over, then we'll give you Rachel too, provided you promise to work another seven years for me. So Jacob agreed to work seven more years. A week after Jacob had married Leah, Laban gave him Rachel too. Laban gave Rachel a servant, Bilhah, to be her maid. So Jacob slept with Rachel too, and he loved her much more than Leah. He then stayed and worked for Laban the additional seven years. Jacob's Many Children When the Lord saw that Leah was unloved, he enabled her to have children, but Rachel could not conceive. So Leah became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She named him Reuben, for she said, The Lord has noticed my misery, and now my husband will love me. She soon became pregnant again and gave birth to another son. She named him Simeon, for she said, The Lord heard that I was unloved and has given me another son. Then she became pregnant a third time and gave birth to another son. She named him Levi, for she said, Surely this time my husband will feel affection for me, since I have given him three sons. Once again, Leah became pregnant and gave birth to another son. She named him Judah, for she said, Now I will praise the Lord. And then she stopped having children. When Rachel saw that she wasn't having any children for Jacob, she became jealous of her sister. She pleaded with Jacob, Give me children or I'll die. Then Jacob became furious with Rachel. Am I God? he asked. He's the one who has kept you from having children. Then Rachel told him, Take my maid Bilhah and sleep with her. She will bear children for me, and through her I can have a family too. So Rachel gave her servant Bilhah to Jacob as a wife, and he slept with her. Bilhah became pregnant and presented him with a son. Rachel named him Dan, for she said, God has vindicated me. He has heard my request and given me a son. Then Bilhah became pregnant again and gave Jacob a second son. Rachel named him Naphtali, for she said, I have struggled hard with my sister, and I'm winning. Meanwhile, Leah realized that she wasn't getting pregnant anymore, so she took her servant Zilpah and gave her to Jacob as a wife. Soon Zilpah presented him with a son. Leah named him Gad, for she said, How fortunate I am! Then Zilpah gave Jacob a second son, and Leah named him Asher, for she said, What joy is mine! Now the other women will celebrate with me. One day during the wheat harvest, Reuben found some mandrakes growing in a field and brought them to his mother Leah. Rachel begged Leah, please give me some of your son's mandrakes. But Leah angrily replied, wasn't it enough that you stole my husband? Now will you steal my son's mandrakes too? Rachel answered, I will let Jacob sleep with you tonight if you give me some of the mandrakes. So that evening, as Jacob was coming home from the fields, Leah went out to meet him. You must come and sleep with me tonight. She said, I have paid for you with some mandrakes that my son found. So that night he slept with Leah. And God answered Leah's prayers. She became pregnant again and gave birth to a fifth son for Jacob. She named him Issachar, for she said, God has rewarded me for giving my servant to my husband as a wife.
Then Leah became pregnant again and gave birth to a sixth son for Jacob. She named him Zebulun, for she said, God has given me a good reward. Now my husband will treat me with respect, for I have given him six sons. Later, she gave birth to a daughter and named her Dinah. Then God remembered Rachel's plight and answered her prayers by enabling her to have children. She became pregnant and gave birth to a son. God has removed my disgrace, she said, and she named him Joseph. For she said, May the Lord add yet another son to my family.